Hey Kelly. It's Lindsay, obviously. Um, I feel really dumb doing this, so ex ignore me if I mumble on a little too much. I am gonna discuss number six. The assessment must be fair and equitable. Um, as equity seems to be uh, something we really need to focus in in all areas, but especially literature and assessment. Um, I have found in my experience, especially with standardized testing, that tests are very biased. Um, we are in a really multicultural world and society, and it is important to make everything equitable. If I have never experienced something, then when I read about it, obviously I'm not gonna do as well as somebody who has. Um, I didn't realize, however, how fair assessment or unfair assessment could lead to grouping that leads to less expectations within the groups. Hey, baby girl, hurry up and go outside, okay? Sorry. Um, so the, yes, baby is cold, I'm so sorry. So one thing I was discussing was how the assessments could lead to grouping where students and teachers own personal bias are gonna to lead to lower expectations, um, content with little value, and the children are gonna also have lower expectations for themselves. Um, something else I found interesting was the social concept of literature as being basically a social construct and that it's more than just obviously being able to read and write it's a part of a bigger picture um, I personally am not a huge fan of assessments because I think they take up way too much time and really we don't have the opportunity to use many assessments to drive our instruction because we spend so much time assessing yeah baby that we have given ourselves not enough time to teach so mm, focusing on ways that teachers can be a part of developing the assessments um, and determining what would be appropriate what would help guide their instruction what would be how we could avoid bias um, seems to be a step in the right direction. Uh, another thing it pointed out is how we don't recognize bias within ourselves, which is obvious but not obvious. Um, I'd like to say I try really hard to recognize when I am seeing something in a biased manner, but obviously if that is what I have always thought or believed or don't even recognize that I believe, it would be challenging for me to see that. So working with others to avoid that would be a, a great plan. Hmm. On the Eastern Shore, I don't think we take these things into consideration enough. Um, the state of Maryland is much more diverse than we see here. Uh, however, you still find within our state testing that often children who come from a more financially secure background and honestly white children tend to do better on standardized testing and I personally believe that is because of the innate bias that present in our test. Um, I really when it came to the case study I don't want to jump around I was thrilled because in all my classes I've ever taken, I've always read about New Zealand and basically it seems like a utopia of education. Um, and NEMP or N-E-M-P is their uh, national testing. One thing that I found really amazing is that the teachers were a part of developing the assessments 
that children had choice in which books they chose and that it took a great deal of it did take a great deal of time like I think it said three or four hours maybe um, but they were tasks that the kids would benefit from something that they would find enjoyable and so since they were interested in the task they were more likely to be successful and demonstrate their abilities um, reading their their language reading and writing um, speaking and listening they're more motivated um, seems like these larger tasks that are probably much more challenging for uh, the teachers and test givers, test administrators to actually not administer but assess uh, are also providing a much stronger view of each student to help the educator pinpoint what they're great at, what they need help with, rather than our ongoing standardized testing here in the United States. Um, I also like how they chose two pretty big transition periods, um, eight to nine, which would be like third and fourth graders, and 12 to 13, which would be seventh to eighth graders. Those are, those are very big transitions. Here we I think our testing, our big testing starts in third grade. So you go with our standards, which at the end of second grade is still learning to read. In third grade, all of a sudden, day one, you're reading to learn. And you're also in a testing grade. So I think it's a good idea to allow those children a little bit more time to develop literacy skills before these massive assessments that they are forced to undertake. Um, again, in that it talks about literacy being viewed as a social activity um, and a cognitive one, obviously. Um, but they look at the results of these projects. They're not just assessments, not just tests. They seem to be projects. And they look at them in different ways. When they report them, Nationally, it appears like they report them from different views, different angles, um, including your, you know, gender, race, um, your financial status, all of those things. Um, but apparently, it's more focused on what the students can do, and it compares it to a national average. Um, just trying to go over what I thought was important and make sure I'm not missing anything. I'd like to teach in New Zealand. <laughs> um, I definitely think that is a much more appropriate assessment tool and benefits both the educator and the student by providing a clear picture of what they need in a manner that is not only not harming the child because they're participating in these awesome learning activities, but it is benefiting the child. So, see you later, Kelly. I'm sorry if I'm rambling on. I'm gonna get you some more work this week. Bye, friend.